Cody's a small town. We hadn't had a murder in Cody in 20 years, so it, it was a shock to the community. It was something I didn't ever expect. We live here because we think it's safe. It was after midnight on April 26, 1983. The streets were deserted, but the Silver Dollar, a popular local bar, was packed, mostly with regulars who knew each other. Apparently, uh, two men and a woman had come into the bar. I don't know if their intentions were to rob the bar, but they had stolen a car, stolen plates, had stolen firearms. An argument broke out between the uh, usual bar patrons and these individuals. Apparently this argument had uh, amounted to these guys pulling guns and holding it on uh, an individual's head there, dragging him towards the door. Eli, call the cops. They're going to shoot me. Hey! Call cops. Cody's night dispatcher, Janet Brewer, took the call. the dollar. A guy just pulled a gun. Okay, silver dollar. Could you be advised that we have a subject in the silver dollar with a gun? Officer Stan Peglow was six blocks away. Stand by, Miss Dusky and Stampede. Sergeant Gene Planbeck was much closer. I was at the back of the building about a half a block away when the call came in. I thought it was a drunk who's getting unruly, basically an old-time West, somebody who rawing the town. Do you know who it is? I don't know. It's pointed at me, huh? What's the situation? Is there a fight? No, I don't know. He's just walking out the door now. Sam. He's going out the door? Yeah, he had a point at me. What door? The front or the back? Front door. Everybody's on the floor. He advised the subject who just went out the front door. Shots fired, shots fired. I copy, Gene. Get some help, Cody. King Sam, John, 440, leaving the area. Three subjects in it. Yellow plate. Go, One direction, Gene. Headed uh, west on Sheridan. Okay, I think I got him. Try and get to your car. Is this the car with the shots fired? That's the car. Hey, Cody, get Dutcher rolling. At that time, we had no way of paging an officer out, so I had to dial every officer on the telephone. Yeah. This is Janet. There's been um, shots fired at the Silver Dollar Bar. They need help out. Officer Rick Dutcher immediately responded. I had just gotten off for work, so I quickly proceeded to where they were, which is only about two blocks from my house. Okay, we're at... Uh... 9th Street, Sheridan, westbound. I was able to catch them in a relatively short distance of five or six blocks. They were only traveling at a speed of about 25 miles an hour, not any sort of evasive driving at all. Yes, we need some help. There was a shot fired. We need some men out right now. It was crazy. I was trying to keep track of the radio traffic and getting flooded with calls coming in asking what was going on. And then somebody called from the Silver Dollar on the 911 line. Put your line for This is an emergency. This is an emergency. We need an ambulance at the Silver Dollar Bar. Okay. How many is hurt? Okay. Uh, one so far. Okay. I'll get a shooting. All right. I know. Okay. I'll get the ambulance out. Okay. We need help. Hang on. Request for an ambulance at the Silver Dollar Bar. Request for an ambulance at the Silver Dollar Bar. I don't know if we want to shut him down yet, do we, Gene? I think so. Let's not get it out in the dark. We were in an area that had street lights and soon to go into an area that did not. And I advised him to go ahead and initiate the stop so that we could have as much light uh, to our benefit as possible. You might wait, guys. I'll be there in just a second. As soon as I got there, we all turned on our red lights. Get them shut down. Man. Get your lights on. Cody, this vehicle is not stopping. Be advised it's not stopping. Request your location again. Right now, we're just coming up on a cemetery. 10 for 10. When you work in a small department, you become really good friends, a family. And my main concern was, would they be all right? 
locked in. I'm going to drop back so you can weave in case an arm comes out. You got it. Cody, we're westbound, 30 miles an hour, approaching the cemetery. 10-4. Two men and a woman had fled the scene of a shooting at a bar in Cody, Wyoming, in a stolen car. As police gave chase, two suspects opened fire on the officers. I'm not hit. I'm backing off. I got, I've got. taken two hits to the windshield. Cody, there's still fire. Get somebody out here. Roll everybody. Be advised, I'm trying 14. Hang on. They were hollering, Janet, get us some help out here. I think I was praying that nothing would happen. The vehicle has taken hits. This is a 10 0 situation. See, they were shooting on both sides of the window, so everybody in that vehicle's got guns. They come on both sides on me. The area we were going through is lined with residences, and when I fire, I have to worry where that bullet ends up. We were basically held hostage and could not fire back. I don't know what they got in here, Gene, but I'm going to. Those shots are too close for me. I'm hanging back. They were doing 30 to 35 miles an hour. It was apparent that they weren't trying to get away as much as they were trying to get us away from them by killing one or all of us if they quit. It appeared that they would reload, and when they were reloaded, brake lights would come on the car to give them a more stable firing platform, and then they would open up on us again. Yeah, the brakes are coming on. Affirm. More shots fired, Cody. 10 4 14. But the third time they shot at me. Back off, Stan. Back off a little. When you leave town, you go through a very narrow canyon, which has three tunnels in it. At that point, we had dropped back to a distance of approximately a quarter mile. They're still firing. They got something. Stay going, Gene. I was terrified that he had been hit himself and was, in fact, injured. I'm out of commission. My vehicle is done, dude, out. And, uh... I'm down. The car took hits through the radiator, so I had to discontinue the pursuit just prior to entering the tunnel. Plymouth and Dutcher, who were behind me, continued on, uh, attempting to locate the suspects. Dutch, I don't see them. Watch the ambush. We watch Boston here. We began to slow the pursuit so that we could see what we were going into. We were concerned that we might drive through the tunnels and find them barricaded behind their car, ready to open fire on our cars, point blank. Watch out for an ambush coming out of these tunnels. Keep your eyes open. I can remember trying to peel my tongue loose from the roof of my mouth, trying to remember when it got stuck there, dying for a drink of water. It was an extremely unnerving situation. We realized after we got to the other side of the tunnels that we had lost them and that we were going to need further help from a, a lot more officers. The only way in to this canyon was the road we were on, and the only way out was through Yellowstone National Park. We had the dispatcher radio in to Yellowstone National Park to seal off that entrance, and we set up a roadblock about one mile past the tunnels. We realized it was pointless to do any type of search until daylight. By sunrise, the man shot in the bar was dead. The town of Cody was gripped by fear as highway patrol officers and two SWAT teams joined forces with sheriff and police officers to search for the armed suspects. Call J1948. Gentlemen, gather around here. I'm going to show you what we've got. We felt that we had them contained within a 40-mile area, which consists of many, many side roads, cabins, summer cabins. A lot of these cabins are unoccupied in the wintertime due to the heavy snowfall in the area. So the initial plan was to go through the area and check all of the cabins to see if you could see the vehicle or anything out of ordinary. Two-man units were assigned to check each road and uh, the cabins on it. Officers Rick Dutcher and Ken Lumen 
had been searching the remote wooded area with 30 others for more than eight hours when they came upon the suspect's car. Quick, take cover! We found a cabin, but at the same time, we pinned ourselves down. We were not able to move out of that situation. I called for backup on our portable radios. Deputy Dan Estes spoke to the suspects. We had no response of any kind from the cabin. I was certain that we were going to have a shootout uh, because of all the shots fired at the bar and all the shots that the suspects had fired at the officers while they were uh, fleeing out of Cody. The cabin was completely surrounded. The time period seemed like hours, but I'm sure it was only seconds. Come out of the cabin immediately with your hands up. Stop right there. Put your hands on top of your head. On top of your head. There was a period of time, probably two to three minutes, and the one who was holding the gun in the bar came out with his hands raised and was directed by sheriff's officers to a protected area where he was placed under arrest. All right, stop right there. Now turn around. Drop down to your knees. Just relax. Some minutes later, the lady and her husband came out and were taken into custody uh, in a similar manner to the first suspect. Keep coming. Keep coming. All right, stop. Turn around. Turn around. Down on your knees. Down. It's a good feeling to affect an arrest of dangerous criminals and bring them to justice and do it without harm to anybody else. The man who called the police from the bar didn't even have to give a second thought. Just pick up the phone and dial 911 and they knew you would get help there. I really think that contributed to us being able to get these people. Another 60 seconds and we would have lost because we wouldn't have known even what direction they had gone, let alone who they were. The man who fired the gun in the bar was convicted of murder. Both male suspects were also convicted of attempted murder of a police officer. 